The word also is a very insidious English word. Among other things, it means in addition to. In other words, it means that this is not priority. It is among other things, as in it's not mentioned to be prominent. When you say, I am also, it means that you are better something else and then the also is just an addition. Now, I'm not teaching you English here today. I just thought that the word also is a very insidious word that I need to discuss today, even as we're discussing the stealth weapons that are used against your productivity and against your purpose on a daily basis. If there was a kitchen cabinet in hell that was preparing itself to take you down, what are those weapons, intelligence stealth weapons that they're going to use to take you down? And today we close that chapter. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. I know, I know it might sound very petty to use that word also in this episode today. But listen, there is a very huge point loading up, very huge point coming. Because we're discussing in these episodes, we've been discussing the stealth weapons that hell uses to destabilize a visionary. We've been discussing and asking ourselves, who is your greatest enemy? And why on earth, what are you here to do? We've been discussing those two things on one end and on the other, trying to balance them and coming up with these stealth weapons that every enemy of your life will be using to take you out. We've been saying that if I wanted to take you out, I will of course want to use weapons that you will not identify because I know that you're going to be protecting yourself, you're going to be on the lookout, you position watchmen on your walls and you put this barbed wire around you and you put these alarms and so on and so forth so that any weapon that I'm throwing against you that is obvious you are able to capture it and you're able to deal with it. So what do I do? If I am the devil, if I am hell, what I'm going to do is to use those things that you cannot easily detect, those things that you cannot easily see, those things that are already present, are already operational in you, including things that we've talked about. Let me just enumerate some of them to you today. The first thing that we discuss and we say that if I wanted to destabilize you and I am the devil incarnate, Okay, I am hell and I'm having a, the, the kitchen cabinet. I'm sitting down to discuss. How can we throw this guy off balance? How can we take him out? How can we make sure that he is not productive anymore? Because he's actually causing a lot of progress and we don't want progress. He's making ends meet. We don't want that to happen. He's having fulfillment going on. We don't want that for him. He's having a lot of joy, a lot of happiness. I mean, there's an aura of joy around him. There's some kind of glory and encapsulating his world and his moves and his environment we need to take him out what do we do the very first thing we're going to do is to make sure that he has broken focus he's been consistent in his focus so we break that focus we give him something else or we destabilize him one way or another maybe his health maybe his morality whatever it is we just break his focus And once his focus is broken, we slow him down. That's what we need. Because if you've slowed someone down, it is now easy to stop them. That's the first weapon they use. They don't... All these other weapons that are big, time, wicked weapons like morality and all those things, they are so obvious. So we protect ourselves against them. But these stealth weapons, broken focus... 
They're the ones we use on a daily basis to, before you know it, you are being stalled. You've been made inconsequential. You've been taken out easily. You've been made powerless. Your authority has been taken away from you stealthily. The second weapon that we discussed in this podcast, in this episode, we say that there's this weapon that is connected to the first and it's the weapon of inconsistency. What a big weapon. Because they know that consistency generates momentum, it generates speed. And if you wanted to destabilize someone who is productive, someone who is making things happen, what do you do? You make sure that they are focused, yes, but then let them be slowed down. Let them become inconsistent. Because if they can just become inconsistent, their level of passion is going to decrease and they are going to start becoming slow and unattached to what they are doing. And if we can just get them to be inconsistent, we we can be able to accomplish one thing and we can be able to infuse apathy into their lives. And once apathy has come in, dedication goes out of the window, excellence goes out of the window, I mean speed goes out of the window and so on and so forth. And in the end, a chronic disease has been wasting away the visionary and been known to them. The third thing we discussed, if I wanted to take you out and you're making things happen, you may, you're very productive, I wanted to take you out and I know that if I showed you something strong, something of an affront of a weapon to you, you will defend yourself against, then I will use a weapon that you will not want to defend yourself against. In fact, I'll use a weapon that is so attractive to you that you will actually want to use it and you will think it's helping you in your quest to progress, in your quest to matter, in your quest to do that which you're supposed to do, in your quest to become effective. What am I going to dangle before you? I'm going to dangle before you shortcuts and shiny objects. I'm going to tell you that you can get this without expending your energy. You can get this without expending your time. You can get this without having a responsibility with it. You can get this without breaking a sweat. You can get this without investing in it. You can get this without sweating and thinking about it. All you need to do, that's the language I'm going to say. All you need to do is do A, B, C, and D and then sit back. That is a shortcut. That is a shiny object. I'm going to tell you to circumnavigate the processes. Don't Use pregnancy for nine months. Use it for four months. Yeah? And I'm going to try to tell you that, you know, we can be able to... Laws are there to be broken. You know, rules are there to be broken. Principles are there to be broken. And this is what we've done to break this principle. And it's now a secret. Very few people are the ones who know this secret. And this is a scheme that we are using to make money. We are earning money. And everyone listens to you. And everyone, in fact, every kind of person that is converted normally goes and converts their loved ones because they are so in love with other people they do not want the other people to go through the process to go through the hard work to go through the the sweat to to go through the patience of waiting they want the instant gratification the urges to be served there and then and they want their their loved ones to experience the same thing. And so these shiny objects are the ones that the devil is using. The angels, I mean, the angels of darkness are using that, if there was such a word. They are using these shortcuts and these shiny objects. And the visionary becomes distracted. And by the time the visionary wakes up, they have lost time. They have lost resources. They have lost money. They have lost their name. Their name, their brand is gone down, it's lost. And if they want to rebuild it, I've seen visionaries actually committing suicide because they took a shortcut and did work. I kid you not. And I've seen others basically become so stressed that they die because they took a shortcut and it did not work. I told, told of a story, I, I think I, I told you a story of Joe Vitale in this podcast some time back, maybe last week, where I shared with you that Joe saved a lot of money one of the things that he really wanted to do in his life was to become an author and so he saved a lot of money and he wanted to become an author by having a time to go out and just write and he doesn't have a care in the world but to write because he's already accumulated money and so someone comes in and tells him to invest in this and this and that and joe thinks that if i put my money that i've saved in that investment i can get so much a return that I will be able to 
fulfill my dream and be able to have enough time to write a book. Long story short, he puts money in that venture and it goes south. The next day, the owner of the business commits suicide because the business went under. He took a shortcut. And everyone normally wants to get things in life through a shortcut. But that's the biggest enemy. That's the biggest weapon that the enemy uses to fight against you. And yesterday in the podcast, we talked about the enemy of strife. The weapon of strife. Where they know that if this person is still focused, if they have refused to be inconsistent, if they have refused to take our shiny objects, then we look within their sanctuary and find the people that they are connected to and people that are contributing towards their vision and people that they are in relationship with. Let us cause division among us those people. Let us cause strife among us those people. Let us make them to fight over nothing. Let us make them to be resentful one to another. And once that is done, I'm telling you, productivity comes to a halt and even a project can come to an end and it can die a natural death and be totally aborted. Today, we are closing by saying this, that if I wanted to craft a weapon that will take you out, probably I've thrown broken focus before you and you've waved it off. I've thrown inconsistency before you and you've overcome it. I've waved uh, strife against you and you've overcome it. And then I've come against you with this weapon, this stealth weapon of shortcuts and shiny objects and you've been able to overcome it. You know what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do is wave one more weapon against you. And it is, this is the weapon of average. <laughs> this is the weapon of mediocrity. This is the weapon of not wanting to spend on a professional, wanting to do your own design and you're not a designer so that you can save some money, wanting to do your own tax returns and you're not a tax consultant so that you can save some money. Basically, trying to be mediocre and trying to be average by doing everything, multitasking yourself into mediocrity. There is a part and parcel where you're supposed to do everything, but that is not the mainstay of life. Hell will convince you to save money. Do you have projects by yourself? I mean, do some projects by yourself. Create your own book covers because these days you can do so with Microsoft Word, which has improved so much. There's page maker. You can find those things on the, on, on the internet. I mean, you end up having a brilliant idea that has been ex- executed with below par excellence. Below par. I mean, it's full of mediocrity. It's average. I mean, the standards have been so compromised. But you see, the comfort that you have at the back of your mind is that I'm doing something. I'm doing something. I'm writing my own book. You know, I'm, I'm publishing. I'm doing this. As long as you are in the game, so to speak, you're giving yourself comfort that you're doing something. And yet, today, this world is not just for things that are being done like that. Today, this world stands out. I mean, a microsecond counts because people want to be satisfied within seconds. People want to see the excellence within seconds. And those ones who have listened to this podcast, I mean, I salute you all because I can tell you that people, people's attention span has so much decreased over the years. And so if you find yourself steeped into this aspect of mediocrity and just being average, See, I I read something about average and it just broke my heart. The other day, this man who who is called uh, Edon (laughs) Goodate, funny name. But anyway, he said something very interesting about average. He said, average is top of the bottom, is the best of the worst, (laughs) is the bottom of the top, is the worst of the best. (laughs) Which of these are you? He said, average means being run-of-the-mill, mediocre, insignificant, and and also run a non-entity. When you say, me also, that is an average statement. I, I am this, I am this, I am this. I am also this, by the way. I am also a Christian. That means that Christian part is average. That's why it's an also. And that's a weapon that they normally use, a weapon of average they normally use so that you have a CV filled with things which are also's. 
They are, you are not a master in them, but you're just bandwagoning them, putting them up together, multitasking yourself into mediocrity, having a lot of things to carry on your shoulders, and you're not an expert, a professional, a master of any. Your hands are full. You're like that insect I'm, I, I was told about. There's an insect that loves chocolate. And if you put chocolate in some kind of container and this insect sniffs that there is chocolate and this container is, is circular, this insect is going to start rotating around that uh, that container over and over and over again and it knows that he's on a journey to get the chocolate and it thinks that every single rotation it's making it is getting it closer and closer to the chocolate but it's all i do about nothing that's exactly what you get when your hands are full of things you are your own designer you are your own artist you are your own producer you are on those things and so on and so forth multitasking yourself into mediocrity average means being run of the mill ed not said it's mediocre it's insignificant it's also run it's a non-entity he said being average is the laziest person cope out it's lacking the guts to take a stand in life it's living by default. Being average is to take up space for no purpose, to take a trip through life but never to pay the fare, to run, to return to the interest of God's investment in you. Being average is also to pass one's life away with time rather than to pass one's time away with life. It is to kill time rather than to work at its death. To be average is to be forgotten once you pass from this life. The successful are remembered for their contributions. The failures are remembered because they tried. But the average, the silent majority, they are just forgotten. That's a sorry thing. And then he continues to say that to be average is to commit the greatest crime one can against oneself against humanity and against one's God the saddest epitaph is this here lies Mr. and Mrs. Average here lies the remains of what might have been except for their belief that they were only average and that is the greatest one of the great I know I've said all these weapons are greatest but I think average, it is one of the greatest weapons that they use against you to take you down. Because you think by comfort that you are in the game. You are just in the game and so it's okay. It's fine. It's all well. I mean, I am in the game. At least I'm not doing nothing. But I'm doing something. But you see, that something is not something that you're supposed to be doing. I mean, you're supposed to be putting all your effort to it, your soul, your mind, your spirit. It says in scripture, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength. That is how we're supposed to approach tasks and responsibilities that we have in life. Otherwise, I normally say, let someone else do it. Don't put your average focus on it. So in a nutshell, in conclusion to this series, if I wanted to take you out and I am in hell and I am discussing the intelligence, the weapons, the stealth weapons that you will not see me using against you, but I'm using against you to bring you down. The first weapon is going to be the weapon of broken focus. The second weapon is going to be the weapon of inconsistency. The third weapon is going to be the weapon of shortcuts and shiny objects. The fourth weapon is going to be the weapon of strife in relationships. And finally, I'm going to unleash a weapon where you are just working for the sake of it, being average, mediocre, multitasking yourself into mediocrity friends watch against these stealth weapons because they are working every single day we are speaking well until tomorrow well we'll start discussing something else bye bye A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com 
who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.